Hey guys, this is Mr. Gron, and I'm coming to you from my basement. Uh, right now, on Monday, I am traveling back from my hunting cabin, hopefully with a cooler full of venison. Uh, but here is the lesson that I am hoping you follow along with for the sub, and uh, take all the notes that I give you, and hopefully when I get back on Tuesday, everything won't be a giant mess. Uh, Alright, so Section 8.5, Day 1. Rational equations and inequalities. Today, our objectives are solving rational equations. Uh, tomorrow, when I get back, hopefully I don't have to pick up too many pieces and uh, we can just jump right into rational inequalities. So, here we go. Start out, we're going to go through five examples and uh, one vocab term kind of in the middle. And hopefully, by the end of it, we know how to, what we're doing with these. So, our first example is a relatively simple one, solving this for x. 10 over x equals 5. Now, I'm guessing a lot of us can look at this and say, yep, I know what x is. Okay, But bear with me, we're going to go through it like the technical mathematical way because that's this isn't the one that you're going to have to actually do. Uh, my denominator here is x. My denominator here, I don't really have one, so that's 1. Um, what I need to do is multiply all of the things here, all the terms, by the least common denominator, which in this case is just x. So I'm going to multiply this side by x. I'm going to multiply this side by x. That gets these x's to cancel out. And now I've got 10 equals 5x. And we can divide both sides by 5 and see that x is equal to 2. One thing to note, x is my denominator here, there's a domain restriction. x cannot equal 0. But it doesn't equal 0, so we don't really have to worry about it for this one. Alright, if at any time we need to pause so people can catch up, because I write kind of fast, that's fine. Um, please have the sub do so, or if you're watching it on your own device, do so to get caught up. Alright, example 2. That was the easy one. Now we're going to get a little more difficult, and we're going to do this. Two different denominators. 5 over 2 is equal to 4x plus 3. Yeah, this is really my basement. That was my dryer that just buzzed. Uh, all right, so least common denominator here. I've got a 2 and I've got an x, so my least common denominator is 2x. I'm going to do the same thing. Multiply this by 2x. Multiply this by a 2x, and multiply this by a 2x. What's going to cancel out? Here, I've got a 2 and a 2 that are going to cancel out. Here, I've got an x and an x that will cancel out. And then nothing cancels out over here. So this becomes 5x equals 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 2x is 6x. And then it's pretty basic algebra after that, right? Subtract the 6x from both sides, and we get negative x equals 8. I don't care what negative 8x is, I want positive x. So divide both sides by negative 1, and x is equal to negative 8. Check our domain restriction. We had an x in the denominator, so x can't equal 0, but it didn't, so we don't have to re really have to worry about it. That wobble in the camera was me bumping the giant pile of totes that I put my my uh, iPod, iPad on in order to record this. All right, example three. Now we're getting really crazy. Now for the warm-ups the last few days of last week, uh, we talked about solving quadratics, and this is what it was building up to. So this isn't the part that you're going to have trouble with. Uh, for this one. We're going to say that x is equal to negative 2 over x plus 3. Now notice the difference here. I've got x here, and I've got x here. That didn't happen before. We just had numbers and then x's in the denominator. I'm still going to approach it the same way, but we're going to end up with an x squared. It's no big deal. We know how to solve it, even if we're not really sure. Uh, 
least common denominator is x. X is in the denominator, so x can't equal zero. I'm gonna put that over here this time so it's out of the way because I need a little more room. So I'm gonna multiply all the terms by x. Multiply that by an x, that by an x, that by an x. The whole idea with multiplying by that least common denominator, just to bring it back, is that I don't want any denominators anymore, right? It's easier to solve this if I can get rid of this x. That's why we're multiplying it by the least common denominator. So right here, this x times x is an x squared. For this term, the x's cancel out, and it's just negative 2. And for this term, it's just 3 times x, so it's 3x. Now, solving quadratics. We solved some quadratics this week. Let's see if we remember what to do. I need to set all of this stuff equal to 0. I need to put it in standard form. That's going to involve moving all of this stuff over to this side of the equation. So adding 2 to both sides, that cancels that out, and we have x squared plus 2 is equal to 3x. Now if I subtract the 3x from both sides, sorry, things don't really line up there. It gets a little jumbled sometimes. We have x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0. Now this is looking like something we hopefully remember how to solve, right? What would I tell you to do with this? Go factor yourself. This factors to x minus 2, x minus 1. They multiply to a positive 2, they add to a negative 3, and that equals 0. When does this equal 0? Well, for this term, the x minus 2, it equals 0 at positive 2. When does the x minus 1 equal 0? At positive 1. These are our two solutions. If I check it back against my domain restriction, there's no conflicts there, so these should be good solutions. Now, what happens if it's not a good solution? What happens if it lands on that domain restriction? This is something called an extraneous solution. Okay, an extraneous solution is this. It's a solution that solves the equation for x, but doesn't work in the original equation. So in our previous ones, if we would have solved them and gotten x equals 0, if I try to plug that back into the original equation, it doesn't work because then it ends up being like 2 divided by 0, which is undefined. Um, so if we get to that point where we got a solution, but it matches our domain restriction, that's an extraneous solution. And we did touch on this a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when we were going over other rational equations. All right, so what do some of these look like, these extraneous solution type problems? For our fourth example, uh, let's say we've got 3x over x minus 3 is equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 3. Now, we might be looking at this with a little bit of fear, but don't worry, it's okay. We can really almost ignore the stuff that's in the bottom of the denominator when the denominators match. The one thing that we need to do, though, is to make sure that we understand the domain restrictions here are that x cannot equal positive 3. That would make this equal to 0, the denominator, so it's undefined. That would make this one equal to 0 on the denominator undefined as well. Uh, now, 
When I say we can just forget about the stuff in the denominator to solve the top, technically that's not right. What we're really doing is this. We're really multiplying both sides on the top by that least common denominator, which happens to be the same thing, x minus 3. Well, now they cancel out, and so what we're left with is 3x equals 2x plus 3. So really, this is the technically correct math way to do it, but if the denominators are the same, figure out the domain restriction and then just get rid of it and solve the top. That's all you have to do. Uh, all right, so now just solving this algebraically, minus 2x on both sides, and we get x is equal to 3. Oops, domain restriction. This is an extraneous solution. And I will abbreviate that as much as humanly possible, extraneous solution. All right, now we're going to get to the really wild one. So this one, now I'm going to spread this out a little bit, give myself plenty of room to work. 2x minus 9 over x minus 7 plus x over 2 equals 5 over x minus 7. Alright, I ran out of a little room on this one, so that might get a little run together, but bear with me. Uh, so, I've got two different denominators, I've got a 2 and I've got an x minus 7, right? So our least common denominator is this. Our least common denominator is going to be 2 times x minus 7. That's what I'm going to multiply all three sides by to get the denominators to cancel out. I can also say that my domain restriction then is that x cannot equal a positive 7. That would make the denominator here and here equal to zero, and so the whole thing gets screwed up. It's undefined. Uh, all right, so this one, I'm going to multiply it by a 2x minus 7. I'm going to multiply this one by a 2x minus 7. And I'm going to multiply this one by a 2x minus 7. And then see what cancels out. The x minus 7s cancel out here. The 2s cancel out here. And the x minus 7s cancel out here. Hopefully that comes through okay. It seems kind of small. All right. This side, the 2 gets multiplied by all the stuff on top here. So that's going to be a 4x minus 18. Uh, over here, the x minus 7 gets multiplied by the x. So that's an x squared minus 7x. And here, we've got the 2 and the 5 left, so that's equal equals 10. Now I want to combine like terms and solve this quadratic. Uh, let's see. I'm going to combine the like terms on this side before I move the 10 over here. Uh, my leading term should be the x squared. Then I've got a 4x and a minus 7x, so that's minus 3x. And a negative 18x. Or a negative 18, excuse me, equals 10. Now I can move that 10 over there, it looks a little bit nicer. Minus 10 on both sides, and we get x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. Another quadratic that we can solve. Now you might say, Mr. Gron, I know different ways to solve a quadratic. Do I have to factor this? No, you don't. You could solve this looking at your uh, graphing calculator's table. You could use a quadratic formula. You could factor it. We've been doing a ton of factoring, so I figure why not factor this. Uh, all right, so 28, it's probably going to be a 4 and a 7. And to make a negative 3, that's going to be an x minus 7. And an x plus 4 equals 0. x minus 7 equals 0. At x is equal to 7. Whoops, that's my domain restriction, so this is my extraneous solution. And my real solution is going to be at x equals negative 4. Both parts, we're going to ask you to list out the real solution and the extraneous solution.